Hello you guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a quick and easy little New Year's Eve makeup look. I love doing New Year's like holiday makeup looks and stuff because I feel like it's the time to wear kind of more bold looks, more exciting, more festive and fun, um, and kind of really like get out of my comfort zone and sport a lot of things that normally are a little bit too extra for every day. I mean, if you're doing graphic liner every single day, go on with your bad self. Um, but these are a little bit more over the top than my typical makeup looks. Um, so I love it. It's so fun just to play around and kind of get out of my comfort zone and explore and just have fun with makeup. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. This one's going to be super easy, super quick. Um, you don't need a ton of products. It's not going to be a super intense eye look. As you saw from the title, it's going to be a little bit of graphic liner, um, which does take some patience and a little bit of practice. Um, but other than that, it's super easy, pretty straightforward. So let's go on and get into it. So I tried hot rollers for um, the first time in a really long time, mostly just because I didn't feel like doing anything to my hair because it's a little bit dirty. Um, and I'm not hating it. Like I got a cute little bend down here. Also, I'm rocking a side part. Who is she? Um, so I'm just going to clip all this out of the way so that way... We have some room. Um, so I'm just going to be moisturizing. I already have my serums and washed my face and all that stuff. I'm going to be using the Beauty Bay Thirst Class Rich Moisturizer. This is the oatmeal one. It's really good for sensitive skin. Um, and I like it in the winter because it's kind of a thicker consistency. And I am so dry right now. And we are going to be going in with a more full coverage foundation. So anytime I'm using something a little bit more full coverage, I really want to make sure I'm well moisturized because those products are usually the ones that tend to show texture, dry patches, all that kind of stuff the most. So I'm going to give that a second just to settle in before I prime and go in with my face makeup. We are going to be doing our base first today, um, but I'm going to go ahead and just kind of prep my brows. Um, I'm going to go in with the Pink Honey Honey Glue Tint Gel Wax. Um, I love this stuff. I've gotten a lot of my friends onto it. I recommend it to everyone. It's so good. Um, Pink Honey is a UK brand. It's kind of like an indie indie brand, I guess. I don't know. Are they big in the UK? Somebody tell me. Basically, um, like this wax and it has a hole in it. And what you do is wet your spoolie and then just stick it in there and then swirl it around and then brush it through. This stuff is like glue. It is so good. Well, I mean, it's called honey glue, <laughs> but this stuff is so good. It does not make my eyebrows crusty or give it a weird tint or anything like that because it is a brown tinted so it doesn't leave like a white cast. I love this stuff and I don't have water nearby um so what I'm gonna do is just take a setting spray and this is another way to do it if you need like extra lasting power if you have really stubborn brown hair brow hairs I don't mind it pretty thin and like manageable but if you have very coarse uh brow hairs you can just use a setting spray and it's just that much extra, extra lasting power. And then I always go opposite way, kind of scrub it into my brows. So that way I'm really distributing that product. And I just use these little disposable spoolies. I get them off Amazon, they're super cheap. It's so easy and it's so quick. For primer, I'm gonna be taking my NYX Marshmallow Primer. This is just a really nice smoothing one, um, drugstore. It is a little bit pricier for drugstore. I think it's like $17, $20 or so. Um, it smells really good and sweet, but I like this. If you're looking for kind of like an alternative to the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas, um, I've been really liking this. It's really smoothing, but also like not silicone-y. Um, it's not necessarily like the professional. It's not like that like gummy texture. So for foundation, I'm going to be going in with an oldie, but a favorite. I haven't picked this up in so long, but it's time. Uh, I'm going to be going in with the YSL All Hours Foundation. I cannot live without this stuff. This is like, ooh, my absolute ride or die favorite foundation it's it's so good it has a nice like satiny 
finish to it, I guess. It's not necessarily matte, but it's so, oh, it's, just, it's flawless. It's such a good, 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 good foundation. It's a little bit pricier, but I just really, really love it. I've been using it for years. I always call this like my formal foundation or like special occasion foundation because I typically only break this out for like special occasions or when I'm doing like a full coverage like glam look. So now that we have that on, I'm going to go in with some concealer. Um, this is the Hourglass Vanish Concealer. Again, another really, really amazing product that I've been using for a very, very long time. Um, since it's kind of the end of the year, I was like, let me pull out some of my favorites. Um, and this is in the shade Birch. So I'm just going to basically concentrate this in the corners where I need it and then a little bit here and a little bit there. I'm doing very minimal concealer. And this is also one of those products that is really beautiful with a brush or with a sponge. And the trick is to kind of let this sit for a minute or two. I like to let it get a little bit tacky. I find that's how I get the most coverage out of my concealers. So while I give that a second to settle in, I'm going to use my Ola Henriksen lip scrub. My lips are just crusty, dusty, nasty. So is this product, but... And then on top of that, I'm just going to go in with my Summer Fridays lip balm. This stuff is also kind of nasty looking. I feel like all my makeup just needs is like a good deep clean. Everything's just looking a little janky lately. So our concealer is now ready to blend out. So I'm just going to make sure that I keep that kind of lifting effect here. And it's nice and bright. You can kind of see we're pulling our face up. And then I'm just going to really dab this into my inner corner, use a little bit on my eyelid to kind of prime my eyes. Just like reflecting on my makeup style and how it's changed, like I've finally realized that like less product is so much more. <laughs> like you don't need to cake it on at all times to get like that full coverage, like glam look you're looking for. Um, and I think also like freelancing and doing weddings and stuff like that professionally for a few years now has really taught me to work in layers and really just be intentional with where you're placing product and you will get such better results. It's going to look cleaner. It's going to wear a lot better. So I always say work in small concentrated layers and just really be intentional where you're placing and blending products out versus just doing the triangles up and down, just basically smothering your whole face in concealer and just blending it out. Like it's a nightmare. So I'm not gonna use cream blush today, but I am gonna cream bronze. I'm gonna go in with the NARS Laguna Liquid Bronzer. I haven't picked up this stuff in a minute either. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit on my hand. This stuff, if I remember, is like, yeah, it's like straight liquid. And I'm actually just going to use the same brush that I just did my concealer with. And I'm just going to dab that in. And I'm going a little bit higher than my cheekbone because when you blend this out, it's going to kind of spread. And if you're starting too low, then you're going to be encrouching down on this lower area of your face. So we want to keep everything nice and high. Some people like to do their liquid contour, cream, bronzer, whatever first and then go in with their concealer. Um, but I prefer to do my concealer first and then lay my bronzer on top. But just personal preference. It's another thing I've learned with makeup. There are no rules. There's no right or wrong answer. I mean, there's like industry standard and like when it comes to like color theory and stuff like that, there's right and wrong answers, obviously. Um, but with like technique and application, it's totally whatever your preference is. Don't let anybody tell you you're doing something incorrectly if it's working for you. It's just a little bit light, so I typically never reach for it because I normally, you guys know, have like a pretty heavy self tan, but I've been kind of taking a break from that, so. Mm hmm that looks so good like healthy and fresh to set the face I'm gonna take uh, Maybelline fit me matte and poreless um, in translucent I have a ton of colored ones as well but I'm only gonna be setting my concealer with this so I don't want any added color I want to keep it nice and bright and I'm just gonna tap this into the areas that I need to set 
I'm gonna focus on my under eyes so that way we don't crease. And again, very light layers. The more powder and stuff you add to your under eyes, the cakier and crepier it's gonna get and the more creasing you're gonna get. So if you're trying to avoid that, then I would go in very light layers, tapping it in so as to not disturb any of the products underneath. So I'm really just concentrating the powder on the kind of like middle, my T-zone essentially. Um, and then to set the rest of my face, I'm gonna go in with something a little bit lighter. Um, if you get super oily or if you need that kind of control, you can go in all over the face with this, but I don't. I just need kind of like a light dusting of something else. So I'm gonna go in with my Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter Powder in the shade one, cause I'm nice and fair right now. I'm just gonna take that on a big fluffy powder brush and I'm just going to tap this on the remainder of my face, basically the perimeter, just lightly setting everything. I'm barely using any. This stuff is so good. I saw a TikTok the other day that was like the most overrated product and I was like, we're gonna agree to disagree on that. And that's literally it. If you need more powder, like I said, go in with however much you think you need. But I'm kind of over the phase of like dipping into translucent and just like rubbing it all over my face. I really am enjoying just like a light press powder. I think it gives such a pretty finish. Looks natural. Not overdone. But if you prefer to bake and do all that stuff, obviously do it you please. I also don't set my face as much as I used to because I cream bronze and stuff so I set my cream bronzer with actual bronzer itself so you're just adding like more and more product on top of each other and like I said light layers work better for me at least so I will just set my bronzers and stuff with bronzer itself if that makes sense. Um, so I'm just gonna basically tap into this a little bit. This is a Patrick Ta brush. Um, it's nice, but it's a little bit dense. So if you have this, be careful because it will like literally pack on the product. Um, but I really like the shape. It's kind of rounded so you can just like rock it back and forth into your um, cheekbone here. So I'm gonna be using the Milani Soleil Baked Bronzer. Um, that's the shade Soleil number five. And I'm really just going to See what I mean? Like, you can really chisel out your cheekbones with this brush. Look at it, it's so pretty. It does such a good job. Also, I'm trying to be better about filming with like just natural light. I'm just sitting in front of my windows. I took down my blackout curtains and I'm not using my harsh studio lighting anymore. So, I know the sun kind of comes in and out, the lighting gets a little bit inconsistent, so I apologize, but I just find that this gives me like the most natural setting and it's just the most realistic because nobody's gonna be walking around with studio lights. Like when you're doing your makeup, you're gonna be walking around outside. So um, I decided that we'll put up with the inconsistent sunshine. For blush today, I'm gonna to be taking the Laura Mercier Fresco blush. Um, it's this really pretty nude color, and I don't know if you can see, but it has some sparkles in it. So it's like nude, but um, has a little something something to it. It's not just like a flat nude, like a bronzer essentially. Um, but I wanna kinda of keep everything in the bronzy family because I don't want like my cheeks and stuff to like detract from the overall makeup look. So today I am going to be contouring. I'm going to, you know, use my typical everyday, um, <laughs> the Dior Contour at Backstage palette. Um, I just really love the undertones of their contour shades. And then I'm going to use my old standby NARS Eda brush. Love her. I'm just gonna add a little bit more definition there, just a tiny, tiny bit, and I'm using the lightest shade in the palette. And then I am going to just lightly chisel out my nose as well. I really love this Eda brush to contour my nose when I'm like in a hurry or don't feel like sitting here and like really carving it out. We are going to take our Morphe Continuous Setting Mist and we're gonna go ahead and set all of this goodness. 
I'm just filling in my brows now using my Urban Decay Brow Blade and I'm using the shade Neutral Nana. This is the really simple part. Um, for shadow, all we're gonna do is basically take our bronzer or you can take any brown taupey eyeshadow you have. I'm just gonna use my bronzer um, so that way it kind of all ties into my face. And I'm just going to be taking a blending brush and I'm just going to toss this into my crease. Similarly to what I did in my Christmas or my holiday glam look, um, I'm literally gonna keep this so simple and easy because I really want the graphic liner to be the star of the show. And I don't wanna overdo it. And then I'm gonna take that under a little bit as well just for some added definition now for the fun part which i'm a little bit nervous about because i want to be able to get it perfect um i'm going to be taking a black liquid liner and you can do this honestly in like any color you want if you have like a fun color choice and i'm gonna be taking the wet and wild mega liner i actually really 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 love this product um i posted a makeup look with it like three years ago, like a very intense liner. Um, and Wet n Wild reposted me on their Instagram. It was very exciting. Um, so I've been using this product for a really, really long time. It has a felt brush. It's really, really nice and long lasting. I feel like I have very good control with it. It is pigmented, pigmented black. It's so good. So essentially what I'm gonna be doing is starting with a very basic black winged liner. And unlike what I normally do is I usually stop it about halfway, but instead I'm gonna take it all the way. So now to clean that up, I'm just gonna take a felt tip pen um, and I'm just gonna sharpen the point of my wing and just get that all really nice and clean. So we have a super sharp, clean, cut a bitch wing going on. Wings are on, they're not, they're not perfect, but that is okay. We're gonna work with what we got. So now what I'm gonna do is basically draw like a little cut crease above my actual crease, connecting to the wing. You'll see what I mean. So that's as perfect as I could get it. Um, it's looking a little crazy. It's looking like a little bit much, but I feel like once we get lashes on, it's gonna look really badass. You already know, Maybelline Lash Sensational Sky High. And then I'm also going to coat my bottom lashes to add a little bit of definition down there. And what I'm gonna do is actually make my bottom lashes pretty clumpy. So it kind of gives that like mod doll like effect. I'm getting that vibe, like very mod, like 60s kind of maybe. I don't know, am I imagining it? Probably. While that dries, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of highlight. This is the Say um, Glowy Super Gel in the shade Star Gel. I mix this into foundations. You can use it for so much stuff. And it actually sits really nicely on top of powders. For lashes today, I'm gonna be taking the House of Lashes Iconic. This is what they look like. They're a nice flared, kind of spiky winged lash. So I'm just going to cut these up and apply them with a little bit of the House of Lashes adhesive as well. I'll wipe off this Lip balm. For my lip liner, I'm gonna be taking Beauty Bay Heather lip liner. It's kind of a pretty pinky brown, like that perfect like 90s brown color. And then for our lip color, I'm between a few options. Um, this is an option. Then I'm gonna take the Beauty Bay lipstick in the color Smile. To top off all of that, I'm going to take the Buxom lip gloss in the color Dolly, which you're probably like, what the hell, it's like purple, but 
it's so pretty. Last but not least, setting spray to make sure this masterpiece doesn't go anywhere. I'm gonna take the Hourglass Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray. All right, you guys, this is the finished makeup look. I think it's really fun and unique. Like I said, it's definitely something different, not something that I would do every single day. I'm really kind of obsessed with the graphic liner. I think it's super cool. And you could actually sub out the lip color too. If you wanted to go even bolder, you could consider doing a red lip. I actually did try it out. Um, I use the Fenty Beauty Mademoiselle Madame Red Lipstick and then the NYX Butter Gloss and a red lip liner and it actually looks really, really cool. So that's another option if you want to take it a step further and be even more bold and fun. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful new year and I will see you in my next video. Bye. I wanna get away tonight.